Hello everyone. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe you're doing good. Welcome to another episode of Prophetic Time. I believe these videos are blessing you and helping you to come more closer to God. And those who are watching me for the first time, this is Evans Francis from Nagpur, India. I am an evangelist into full-time ministry from last 16 years. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, do subscribe, hit the bell icon. So whenever I come live, I share a video or a post, a dream from the Lord, a vision from the Lord, a message from the Lord, you will be notified. And I believe in today's message, God is going to speak to you in a perfect way and in a way that you have never expected. And uh, I believe that God has a plan and purpose for you and it is divine. It's not humanly. It's not uh, uh, like, you know, your family has planned for it or what your parents have planned for it, but it is divine for you. And in the end of the message, there is an imp in the end of this message, there is an important message that I will be sharing you sharing with you. So stay tuned for that message. So without wasting a lot of time, let us pray and dive into the word of God. Father God, we come to thy presence in this wonderful time. Master, Lord, we come to your throne of grace. Thank you for all the good things you have done in our life, Master. Thank you for always being with us, taking care of us, providing all our needs according to your riches and glory. Even though we are not faithful towards you many times, but you are always faithful towards us for that. We thank you, Abba. I give to this word into thy hand, your children into thy hand. I give myself into thy hand. Give me your wisdom and knowledge, strength and courage to share your word in its context. In Jesus' precious name we pray amen 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 beloved god had a divine plan and purpose for each of his children and it is our responsibility to discover it pursue it and fulfill it to the glory of his name and for our eternal rewards many times when we live in this world we expect everything will be crystal clear uh, you know and god will tell us in audible voice this is what you have to do but you have to understand you know you have to discover it you have to pursue it you have to fulfill it so you have you need to be very sensitive and think about your life and when you go through it that how was my life all all about and you have to see the pattern how your life has been and how god has been working and that will help you immensely uh, to do and understand the divine plan and purpose God has for you. When we read book of Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 6, there we can see Saul's conversion. It says, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's uh, follower. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on his mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell down to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what to do. Beloved, our God is a gracious heavenly father and he has a perfect, accurate and detailed plan for each believer. Remember, Saul's conversion did not happen by chance. There was a divine plan and purpose. I want to tell you something that uh, you are not watching this video by chance. You are not believing in Jesus by chance. You are not believing or going to church or you have a desire and a hunger and thirst for the things of God by chance. But there is a divine and plan and purpose in you. That's why you incline towards the things of God. When we read book of Acts chapter 9 verse 15, it says, But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. Remember, God had promised that Saul will be a vessel in his hand to reach out to the Gentiles. But Saul was pursuing his own 
agenda outside the will of God and his perfect plan for his life. Remember, beloved, many times that's the problem in our life that we are living or we are pursuing our own agendas and we want God to support that. We want God to, you know, deal and uh, work according to our wish, but that's not going to happen. Remember, the question arises is how can we discover the will and this perfect plan for our lives? Uh, and uh, that's we are going to see, uh, you know, in this uh, message. Uh, but remember, beloved, that when we read the text, you can see that one question was asked by Lord himself, while two questions were asked by Saul. The Lord said, Why are you persecuting me? And, and Saul said, Who are you, Lord? And uh, what will you have me to do? Remember, in these three things we will see today's message. Uh, remember, the Lord asked Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you walking outside my will and my perfect plan for your life? The same way God is asking you today that why are you walking outside my will? Why when I have a perfect plan for you, why can't you be obedient to my voice? Remember, God is not pleased when we are unable to discover and walk in his will and perfect plans for our lives uh, and he is asking us the similar question that needs to be properly addressed uh, remember different people have different reason why they are walking contrary to the will of god and perfect plan for their life but whatever the reason none is acceptable unto god remember beloved god has a plan for the life of everyone of his children and you will be saying how can this be true remember beloved the bible is full of several examples of his plans and purposes for his people when we see the life of abraham uh, you know when we read hebrews chapter 11 verses 8 to 10 there we can see it's written it was by faith that abraham obeyed when god called him to leave home and go to another land that god would give him as his inheritance he went without knowing where he was going and even when he reached the land god promised him he lived there by faith for he was like a foreigner living in tents and so did isaac and jacob who inherited the same promise abraham was confident looking forward to a city with eternal foundation a city designed and built by god here we can see the plan and purpose that the lord had and the plan and purpose that the abraham understood that's the beautiful line you know that abraham was living in tents he was having his own house he left everything but you know he was confident confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundation you know a city designed and built by god many times when we live in this world we are all focused about our house our bungalows and all the materialistic thing but remember abraham being father of all nations you know he was looking forward to a city with eternal foundation not earthly foundation but eternal foundation second we can see about moses when we read Hebrews chapter 11 verses 24 to 27, it says it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward it was by faith that moses left the land of egypt not fearing the king's anger he kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible remember that's the life of moses that god had a plan and god uh, did supernaturally different things beautiful things in his life another person that we can see in the bible is that is david remember we are how many uh you know examples we take david will be always there remember when we read first chronicles chapter 17 verse 7 it says now go and say to my servant david 
This is what the Lord of heaven's army has declared. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people. Here also you can see that God had a plan for David. If you're watching me right now, you need to know something that God has a divine plan and a purpose for you. Do not look at the situation. Know that God is able to turn that situation. God is able to do a wonderful thing in your situation. When we see the life of Isaiah, it says, uh, when we read Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, it says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send? A messenger to his people who will go for us. I said, Here I am. Send me. God had a plan for Isaiah, but, God, but Isaiah also submitted to God's will. That is very important. Remember, God has wonderful plan for you, but until and unless you accept it, until and unless you surrender, until and unless you give up your own plans and, uh, and allow God to work in your life, nothing is going to happen in your life. Another person that we can see in the Bible is Jeremiah. When we read Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 5 to 8, it says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. O sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I am too young. The Lord replied, Don't say I am too young, for you must go where I sent you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. God had a plan for Jeremiah. But he said, I can't speak for you because I'm too young. If anybody of you are watching me, you're in your teens, you're in, you're very young and you will be you thinking that God cannot use you. But I want to tell you something that God can use you. Doesn't matter. Age is not a barrier. God just wants a surrendering heart. God just wants a person who is submit, who lives a submitted life. That is very, very important. Uh, another person that we can see about whom this uh, message is all about uh, is uh, Paul. You know, when we read uh, Acts chapter 9 verse 15, we have read it earlier also. It says, but the Lord said, go for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. Today you might be listening to me and uh, you know you have heard God in the past and you might be thinking that God no chance that God can use me remember here Saul later who became Paul you know he had he was a part he was plotting a murder and you know he was standing there when an, when an innocent man was being stoned uh, to death but you know he did nothing he was a part of it he was against against the people who followed the way not Christians the way that's what the people used to call people who believed in Jesus that the followers of the way and uh, he was against them he was persecuting them still God had a plan for him so it doesn't matter that uh, that you know what you have done doesn't matter about your past god is able to do a wonderful thing a beautiful thing in your life uh, remember when when we have a plan we have a lot of characteristics we have a lot of things this and that but remember when god's plans have three very important characteristics first it is a personal plan remember there is no one else in this world like you and god's plan for you is unique and he has a purpose to fulfill in and with your life that cannot be fulfilled in the life of another or other person so remember the plan of god for you is uh, a personal plan uh, second thing it's a perfect plan when we read romans 12 1 and 2 it says uh, we are told that the will of god or god's plan and purpose in the lives of his children is good and acceptable and uh, perfect remember beloved that uh, remember that God's plan for you is perfect. You don't have to doubt when you when you are walking in the will of God. Situation situations might look worse in the beginning, but you need to know the ending. Just imagine, you know, David 
in the in the forest tending the sheep lion is coming bear is coming what he would have thought why all these problems if god is with me why the situations should come but remember god was preparing him to fight the goliath and then at the end god was preparing him to have patience because he has to deal with king saul in the future so remember the plans of god are perfect and you need to surrender yourself our regarding that and third thing you need to understand is that god's plan is a practicable plan in other words remember it is uh, workable and thoroughly related to everyday living and service remember it's not a plan that only sounds good and acceptable and perfect theoretically it proves to be so in actual day by day experience so you need to know that the plan of god is not just uh, he will say if i will take you to the nation and you will be watching me or watching me in a small village but i want to tell you god is able you know when i was born i was born in a village you know we used to live in a mud house we lived in houses made of grass we lived in tents and uh, from that situation you know god has brought us god has brought me and my family this far so never think that your area where you are staying today uh, can stop the work of god remember when you are walking with god and god is with you he can take you to nations so never be uh, never underestimate the plan and purpose of god in your life the when uh, one question that paul asked to jesus that who are you lord remember paul asked this question from the lord when his personal plan and pursuit was interrupted by the lord remember our first concern should be to discover god's plan for our life the necessary condition is that we must first establish a personal relationship with god and we need to know who he is before we can discover what he wants uh, not just knowing about him but having a healthy intimate relationship with him it is sadly true that some believers fail to discover god's plan and find their days weeks months and years are filled with disappointment defeat frustration and failure remember how wonderful it is to feel that we are achieving something worthwhile not for ourselves but for in accordance with the will of our heavenly father remember beloved every unbeliever is living a life outside the will of god as saul was until the time of his conversion when we read acts 9:5 but it is also sadly true that many christians plans their own lives remember beloved we make decisions and choices which are outside the will and perfect plan plans of god for our lives when we read acts 9:5 it says paul says who are you lord saul asked uh, the voice replied i am jesus the one you are persecuting remember when we read john chapter 21 verse 3 it says simon peter said i am going fishing will come to they all said so they went out in the boat but they caught nothing at all so remember beloved that there is nothing greater or more comforting than to know that we are in the center of god's will we enter god's plan when we accept christ as our lord and savior remember saul entered the plan of god when he asked who are you lord the ro- the lord revealed himself to saul i am jesus your savior remember it does does not mean he was not interested in saul or not watching over him prior to his conversion but he had an eternal purpose for him saul entered into god's plan when he bowed at the feet of the risen lord accept, accepted him as savior and acknowledged him as lord 
the third question Saul Saul asked second question Saul asked is that what will you have me to do remember that's the question we need to ask and this should be our daily experience after surrendering to Jesus as our Lord and Savior all who belong to the Lord of any age have a glorious eternity before them and God's plan has an earthly part which is like the foundation of a building and a heavenly part which can be likened to the structure of the building remember beloved we continue in God's plan by daily obedience to his revealed will and God reveals his plan to us step by step when we read Psalm 37 verse 23 it says the Lord directs the steps of the godly he delights in every detail of their lives remember beloved the human condition that has to be met if we are to know his will increasingly is total submission and strong desire to obey him remember and this is indicated in Saul's question and this inquiry as to what God's will is involves uh, four thing when we read Acts chapter 9 verses 6 it says now get up and go into the city and you will be told what to do the first thing you understand is uh, communion communion with him in prayer remember when we read Psalm 27 11 there we can see a suitable prayer is recorded it says teach me how to live O Lord lead me along the right path for my enemies are waiting for me remember beloved it is when we know what is to go regularly into that place alone with the Lord that he graciously reveals his plan to us step by step that should be a prayer if you want to know the will of God Lord teach me how to live and lead me along the right path that should be a prayer every day Second, that is important is uh, we have to delight in and meditate in his word. When we read Psalm 1 verse 2, it says, But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. Remember, we receive divine guidance as we read and submit our lives to the commands and guidance of the word of God. When we read Psalm 119 verse 105, it says, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. It is very important. The more you know the word of God, it will be easier for you to understand the plan and purpose of God in your life. The third is uh, you need to show complete obedience without question. Remember, God reveals his will to us more and more as we walk in complete obedience without question to his already revealed will. When we read 1 Samuel 15, 22, it says, But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifice, or your obedience to his voice? Listen, Obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Remember, a God cannot use a person if that person is not obedient, if he is not doing what God wants him to do. Remember, whereas doesn't matter if that person is educated, doesn't matter how much, how many degrees he has, but if he doesn't have the quality of being obedient he cannot see the will of God in his life and the fourth character we can see is absolutely having trust in God when we read Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 8 it says trust in the Lord with all your heart do not depend on your own understanding seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Remember, beloved, we need to trust God 
absolutely for us to know his will and perfect plan for our lives he gives us direction as we lean on him and trust his guidance remember the lord spoke of saul as a chosen vessel and saul had to trust him in all that he permitted in his life in the ways of suffering stoning imprisonment when we read second corinthians chapter 11 verses 24 to 28 it says five different times saul is saying or paul is saying five different times the jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes three times i was beaten with rods once i was stoned three times i was shipwrecked once i spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea i had traveled on many long journeys i have faced danger from river and from robbers i have faced danger from my own people the jews as well as from the gentiles i have faced danger in the cities in the deserts and on the seas and i have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not i have worked hard and long and during many sleepless nights i have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food i have shivered in the cloak in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm then beside all this i have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches that was paul you know when he said yes to god many of uh, today's preachers today's servants of god they will never want all this when they think of doing god's work but but when paul said yes to jesus see the list that he had to go through but god was maturing him god was showing him his grace and mercy and he was able to do so much for the kingdom of god when we read first peter chapter 4 verses 12 to 13 there it says peter is saying dear friends don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you instead be very glad for these trials make you partners with the Christ in his suffering so that you will have a wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world remember the what peter is saying when you go through trials in your life remember that you you are having your partnering with jesus on the cross that is very important you are becoming a partner with christ so do not overlook rejoice in your pain and suffering because remember that you are able to stand with Jesus when we read first peter 4:19 it says so if you are suffering in a manner that pleases god keep on doing what is right and trust your lives to the god who created you as he will never fail you remember keep on doing what is right that means doesn't matter if you have to go through suffering persecution people will revile against you people will hate you despise you they will speak ill about you it's okay keep on doing it keep on doing the right thing follow the way follow the word follow the holy spirit and god will take care of you remember as soon as paul saw the light from heaven above the brightness of the sun he said lord what will have thou have me to do remember as soon as he was willing willing to yield he was in a condition where god could meet his need where god could display his power where god could use him for his own glory remember beloved are you saying today or are you asking god what will thou have me to do the place of yielding at submissiveness is just where god wants us god wants us to reconsider our lives and our ways and return to him remember the main thing today that god wants is obedience when you begin yielding and yielding to god he has a plan for your life making the right choice will bring a sense of inner peace and tranquility 
but making the worst choice will make you feel troubled and restless beloved always know that god has a great purpose for you god has a great plan for you and he desires that you grow in his will so that you can achieve and you can reach your destiny for what he has called you to be i believe this message has blessed you let us pray father god we come to thy presence in this wonderful time master Lord, we come to your throne of grace. I give your children into thy hand, their lives into thy hand, Master. Let your will be established in their life for the purpose, Lord, you have chosen them. Let that purpose come to pass. No plan of the devil, no plan of the evil one prevail, Master. Lord, all the plan and purpose which you have for them is for, for their good and not for their harm. For that I thank you, Abba. Lord, thank you for all the good things you have done in their life, Master. Thank you for all things, all the good things you are about to do do in their life master every plan of the devil every plan of the evil one every plan of uh, of the of their enemies master perish in jesus name master let know let alone your will be established in their life master for the purpose you've chosen them for the purpose you've chosen them for the purpose you've chosen them let that come to pass master all the disturbances all the misunderstandings all the confusion brought by the devil be removed in the name of jesus there is there are people you're watching me you are going through confusion especially in regards to your marriage uh, and uh, your devil is bringing unreasonable uh, thoughts in your mind and he is making you confused allow god the holy spirit to work in your life god wants god is not an author of confusion but he is an author of order and god is doing a something very beautiful very wonderful thing you know just just allow the holy spirit to work in your life lord i give your children into the hand every work of the devil be removed from their life every plan and purpose you have for them be established in their life master all the crooked ways be made straight in the name of jesus all the mountainous situations be turned into valley in the name of jesus lord you're doing it for that i thank you lord you're doing it for that i thank you i see certain names i see the name called sheila i see a name called sneha i see a name called malti i see a name called john that god lord is just you know you're confused in your life but the god is saying that do not be confused he has a great plan and purpose do not be discouraged do not allow the devil to discourage you he's having a great plan and a purpose for you just allow god to work in your life lord i give your children into the hand i speak clarity upon their life master may they be clear in their thoughts master all the plans of the devil all the plans of the evil one i cancel it right now in the name of jesus master i decree and declare miracle marriages upon their life in the name of jesus i declare and declare miracles upon their lives in the name of jesus miracle jobs miracle children miracle babies lord you're doing it supernatural work for that i thank you master every closed doors be made be opened in the name of jesus lord you're doing it for that i thank you abba you're doing it for that i thank you in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 there is an important message after my uh, see of message uh, so just do watch the message and uh, stand with us and i believe this uh, message has blessed you so if the if the lord leads you and if this message has blessed you see to it that you share this message with your friends and loved ones if you are using an android phone or an apple phone you can download my app app name is evans francis and if the lord leads you become a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud of our small ministry the links are also there in the description below and uh, if you want if you have any prayer request you can my email address my whatsapp number is there feel free to share and uh, i will try my level best to be in touch with you and get back to you please see that you do not call the number uh, without uh, prior uh, discussion with me and uh, because sometimes i will be in prayer or praying for somebody or like i am in studio right now so you know it becomes tough so have a proper word in the message 
and uh, then we, we can decide the time uh, so that we can you know we can speak on the phone if your situation is uh, requires a discussion on the phone and if you want to grow more in the Lord we have a telegram channel and the link is also there in the description you can join the channel and daily you will receive a lot of content daily devotionals uh, messages videos and uh, I believe that it's going to be a blessing for you so, and uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel do subscribe hit the bell icon so whenever I come live I share a video or a post you will be notified May God bless you. May his face shine upon you. Stay blessed. Keep smiling. Shalom. I believe today's message has immensely blessed you. And I would like to share something very important message with you. And I'm making this video because God asked me to. We strongly believe in the principle written in Matthew 6, 3, where it says that when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Being in full-time ministry for over a decade, God has enabled us to do many things for the needy body of Christ. And whatever we do, people who are the pillar of fire of our small ministry knows about it. Recently, God enabled us to distribute food in the streets. And we caught something that was very painful on camera. I would like you to have a look at it. When we were giving food to those on the roadside, we met an older man who was eating newspaper. He couldn't believe it uh, when we brought food in front of him. And uh, even our team was totally shattered and heartbroken after seeing such a scene. What we saw is still fresh in our heart and mind and we pray to God that we would be able to do more for such people on the daily basis. When we do such activities, uh, we don't post it online, we don't post it on social media uh, because we know that our Heavenly Father sees what is being done in secret. Being sensitive to the needs of other believers is one of the biggest responsibility of the body of Christ and if the Lord leads you become a pillar of fire of our small ministry there are other things that we also do and if you like to know more about it you can get in touch with me via email or whatsapp and uh, all the details are there in the description below suppose you can't uh, stand with our ministry financially don't be disheartened Instead, support our ministry through your valuable prayer and become a pillar of cloud of our small ministry. Always remember, even Jesus could feed the thousands when a small boy sacrificed his lunch. Will you stand with me? Alone I can't. Together we can do small things for the kingdom of God. Stay blessed. Shalom.